All right, y'all, so today what we looking at is the way too early MVP race, man. We already got the top five people in it right now. You know what I mean? And so first off, we're going to go over the last two quickly because I think it's not too sustainable and either they're going to get traded or, I don't know, the better player on their team is going to start playing better. But let's get right into it, man. At five, we have James Harden. He's averaging 39, 12, and 5 on 59, 50, 92. Which, that's fucking not sustainable. If James Harden is able to do this, he'll be a unanimous MVP. But he's only played two games. So it's like, he hasn't played many games. And I think he's going to get traded. Um, at least at the deadline. So, I don't expect him to keep this stuff up. But if he doesn't get traded this season, I feel happy for the Rockets. You know, when you have a generational talent like that, you want to hold on to him as long as possible. And James Harden, obviously... Should he bring you these numbers every night, man? You want to keep him. All right, then number four spot, we got Kyrie Irving. He's averaging 29, 6, and 4. Shooting 61, 56, 100. So this is another time, bro, that is not sustainable. <laughs> bro, if you shooting like that, you will be the unanimous MVP. 69, I mean 61, 56, 100, bro. And it's not like Kyrie taking like three threes and has managed to hit most of them. It's like, bro, this is a high volume score on this efficiency, which is kind of ridiculous. This team is two and two. I do feel like when, you know, KD's still back. Oh. But like, I feel like KD, especially, I mean, eventually will be either close to his scoring level or be the leading scorer and get more touches than Kyrie. Uh, I actually feel like they shouldn't. KD, when coming off an injury that bad, you should probably take it slow. So I'll say let Kyrie be the first option for like a month or two. And then let KD take over. Uh, you know, just let him ease into that role. Because he really hasn't had to be that first scoring option for a while. In Golden State, obviously he was. But he didn't have much pressure on him since there was so much spacing. And shit like that. Alright, but now. At the third spot. The second best sign in the league, Joel Embiid, bro. He's averaging 28, 13, and 3. Shooting 50, 36, 84. And his team is 3 and 1. And you'll see the person I got ahead of him. His team's record is ass. But it's for a whole different thing. All right. So Joel Embiid's been playing great, man. Six has been looking pretty damn good. I'm not going to hold you. I don't know if the new system is working out. I don't know if it's at the first. Those first games that they've had have been really cheap. Like they played against the Cavs, the Knicks. Uh, I don't know who they played against last night. All oh, the Raptors, which are shell themselves. So maybe it's an easy schedule. Uh, I still feel like they should trade for James Harden. I feel like it's the best decision. If Joel Embiid is doing this with Simmons as his spacing, uh, then imagine what he can do with Harden as his spacing. You know, that's just in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, Embiid, Embiid, when it comes to dominance, like he's probably the most – dominant offensive center when it comes to being around the paint. I mean, unless you consider Giannis or AD a center, then obviously it's them. But, yeah. In the number two spot, bro, we have Nikola Jokic. You know what I mean? Best center in the league. You know what I mean? Fuck yourself if you think different. Why have him this high, bro? Is because the numbers he's putting up is legit ridiculous. And I, I don't see them slowing down, really. He just had a 14 assist game with Jamal Murray out. And his team shooting like shit. The only person that was shooting well was Michael Porter Jr. He shot like, he had like 30 on like 66% shooting, which I'm saying MPJ, bro. We should either keep him or, get him or trade him for Harden because he has so much potential that we need to use him the right way. We can't be like, oh, let's trade MPJ and this other guy. Nah, bro. Like MPJ has so much potential. We could either keep him or use him as like, a trade should be a somebody massive like James Harden. But look. So Nicole Jokic last night had a 14 assist game with all them damn bums on his roster. Only person that was not MPJ that was playing well too was Monte Morris. And he had like I think it was like 14 to 18 points. Which is solid. I mean Monte Morris is one of the most efficient guards in the league when it comes to passing the ball and stuff like that. So that's fine. But like Jokic, he's averaging 25, 13 and a half, and 12 right now. And he's shooting 62, 40, 80. Now, the shooting splits I don't think are sustainable. I can see him shooting 40% from three this season. He's been taking them so little that 
hey, as long as you don't take too many a game and don't shoot yourself out with it, you know what I mean, you'll be fine. And you, you'll still shoot 40%. I see his field goal percentage probably going to drop down to, like, 50s. Uh, he's a center, and centers are normally really efficient, especially with Jokic being an amazing post player. So maybe he can keep it close to 60, as in, like, he could probably finish the season at 55%. But I don't know. He's second in my MVP race because even though his team is 1-3, he's never been the problem. The first night that they played against the Kings, uh, Jamal Murray played big minutes and was just stinking it up. He was, like, 1-9, for nine, and Jokic... Had 29, 15, and 15. So obviously he wasn't the problem that game. Uh, he recorded his career high in assists against Houston, 18. That was the first center to record 18 since Wilt Chamberlain. So Jokic is averaging a triple double right now, and like it's really going unseen because of obviously his team is not nationally televised, and his team is losing. But yeah, and then number one spot we all knew he was gonna be here. It's Trey Young. And Trey Young has started off. On a fucking hot streak. I hope he can st- sustain it. Trey Young. I don't think he'll be the youngest MVP ever if he wins an MVP. I don't know. People just don't talk about him. He might be the youngest MVP ever if he does. But I feel like this is somewhat sustainable. 34, 7, and 4. Like, I don't know if 34 is sustainable as much as 29 is for him. But I can see his assists go up and his rebounds go up. I mean, he has a much better team around him this year. Uh, I've been watching the Hawks a little bit too. They fun to watch, you know what I mean? They just need some fucking defense. I'm not gonna lie. Even though they win the games, their defense still looks lacking at times. Like, uh, yeah, but that's it, y'all. So way too early MVP race. I have Trey at one, Jokic at two, Embiid at three, Kyrie at four, and Zion's Harden at five. Yeah. So leave a like on the video and do all that.